Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn and the lovely Sir Henry Deadman. And we are here to talk to you about a number of different things. Tech, space, cars, AR, VR. Oh, you've got an interesting ADHD gaming treatment thing. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. I was very curious. And we're going to start with this keyboard, which is <laughs> which is a clip from a video that I've done recently. Uh -huh. This is the Corsair K70 Pro Mini Wireless. Mm -hmm. which is a tiny 60% keyboard. And I hate this size of keyboard, I'll be honest, because it misses all <laughs> the directional arrows and other things. But this is actually quite an exciting keyboard from Corsair because it's um, it features swappable switches. Uh, oh. As you can see, it's got a standard bottom row layout, so you can change out the keycaps and make it your own style. But it's a wireless mm -hmm. keyboard, and it packs in all sorts of... Um, specifications including 8000 hertz polling rate and 4000 hertz key scanning and other things which make it basically very fast mm. but the most exciting thing about it is the removable switches because uh, generally big brands gaming brands don't do that no i saw nzxt did one recently but corsair hasn't and none of the other ones razor doesn't as far as i know for example yet so it's pretty exciting to see them doing it it's pretty pretty mm. nerdy but i think there's a lot of keyboard enthusiasts out there that would be keen on this and mm. if you're a gamer that's looking to change your keyboard and upgrade the switches make it sound a bit nicer or just have the opportunity to change them if they break over time it's pretty exciting it's about 169 pounds it's not cheap but i actually really enjoyed it and i generally don't like 60 percent because it's just as i said too small mm. for me um i I like my directional arrows and other buttons. They yes. are there still, but you have to press the function key. So, for example, uh, to be able to press the delete key, you have to press function and um, backspace. <laughs> so you've got like some things <laughs> require two presses, which just makes life a bit of a hassle. But it has a lot of actions in it. And one of the curiosities about the K70, that, that you can see here as the K65, because one of the things I thought was weird about it is the K70 it doesn't have as good RGB as this this one, mm. which is the K65 RGB Mini, which has a white backplate. So you can see the RGB shining through, whereas the K70 you can see there isn't quite as snazzy in terms of the mm. RGB, which is a shame. Yeah. But I ended up putting some pudding keycaps on it and made it look a bit nicer. <laughs> but it's got it's it's got some weird things built into it. So for example, the WASD buttons, their secondary action if you press the function key is actually mouse movement. So you can like move your mouse cursor and oh. and press clicks. So you could have theoretically control everything from your keyboard without even needing to use a mouse. It's mm. also got a lighting bar that runs around the outside of it. It's a bit crazy in various different ways. It's interesting, though. It's pretty pretty cool, I think. That's yeah. one bit of hardware mm. I've been looking at. The other one, which I'm not going to demonstrate, I'm not using it at the moment, but this is right. the End mm. Game Gear microphone, That's funky. which I've done a video on as well, and I'd recommend mm. checking that out. It's basically a USB mic, and it looks very similar to the Quadcast S, so it's kind of similar to your microphone, except mm. obviously it's got RGB. You can change between... I think there's 12 different RGB lighting colors that you can yeah. change between. And it also has that equalizer graph thing basically on the front of it. That's mm. not the right word, but it reacts to the levels of your voice. It's level yeah, gauging, yeah. it really. It has a built-in shock mount, detachable pop filter and other things. But the most interesting thing about it is the smallest button on the back. There's a tiny little button on the back just below the USB, just above USB-C port, mm. which you click and it turns on AI noise cancelling. So it's got AI noise cancellation built into it. So it's a plug-and-play oh, microphone, no. no software required. You can just flick a button and it turns noise cancellation on. And it actually is very effective. It blocks out a lot of noise. So I was really surprised. It's a really good USB microphone mm. and probably one of the best I've seen. I really, when I got it out, when I got it out of the box, I just thought it looks like a ripoff of the quadcast, but it's actually better yeah. in a number of different ways because it has <laughs> higher capture quality, it gets up to 192 kilohertz in terms of sample rate. Uh -huh. Um, and it comes with all those features like shock mount and everything else, yeah. but then has the AI noise cancelling, which you don't really see. I think you only see it in software levels. So with Crisp AI on Discord or NVIDIA's broadcast software or RTX voice and other things where you could actually turn that um, software level cancelling, but usually it leads to a lot of compression. This mic didn't seem to have that, so pretty oh. impressed with it. I think it's going to be cool. Yeah, it looks good. I thought it was um, flat for a minute when you 
Yeah, it's like a, it's flat it's on like three a side, yeah, triangle. Yeah, so it's like a bit, yeah, but I, I thought it was just like a little thin square. And it like comes little, in white and black. I like a remote. I thought it was like a remote. <laughs> but you see but the I little like, switch there, that yeah. tiny little switch just hidden at the back. You might not even realise if you just bought the mic and just set it up, you might not realise there's a button there that just turns on really yeah, good no, noise like cancelling. And noise cancellation is obviously a big problem with microphones, especially mm. USB, I find. XLRs are a bit better at blocking out external yeah. noise but usb mics can be really mm. fiddly to get right yeah. anyway so that's that that's the tech yeah. from my end from this like week it. if you want to come like over it. to the main channel and watch those videos they're available next thing i want to do is talk about this battlefield 3 mod which i've seen oh yeah battlefield reality mod reality which is being released which is mad because how old is battlefield 3 now it's uh old. it's 2006 no, eight. Feels like a long time ago, and this is inspired by the project Project Reality mods from Battlefield Two Days. All oh, right, yeah. Did you play those? I uh, never properly, but I know of them. Yeah, I, I remember playing them, and they were like the forerunner to the likes of Armor and Squad in terms yeah. of the sort of mill sim style of shooter, and at that experience so it takes battlefield and then just makes it more serious by making you die a lot quicker and <laughs> removing all the hud that you can see so it's all just a lot more yeah. serious and i saw tomographic or or one of those guys playing it oh yeah I can't, maybe, maybe jack frags I don't remember mm, exactly probably that. jack frags i think actually probably worse sorry it's uh it looks like the experience that we would probably have, especially if we were playing yeah. with Bonnie, is that <laughs> our teammates were getting killed constantly because you have to be just like sticking together close and have yeah. good enemy identification and know what's happening. I, I think it looks good. Name. I'm just it it's look, mad yeah. that they've got yeah. a mod for Battlefield Three, which feels like it's ancient now. Uh, 2011, I just checked. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's pretty ancient. Eleven years. But it looks pretty good from the... I mean, 10, this, looks, years, yeah. this doesn't look like that old, does it? The, the, no. You can see hints of the original yeah. game, but I think it has, it's been overhauled. Yeah, on certain textures, I think. There's certain, like, some things look... We look at stuff, they look a bit flat compared to what they do nowadays, but... I actually kind of want it to do well as well, because maybe yeah. Battlefield will just take it, it back throw a Throw some dark. ideas, yeah. Because this is kind of, I mean, this isn't what Battlefield used to be like, but I feel no. like Battlefield's gone a lot more arcadey over the years. And they all have, yeah. It was a lot more serious back in the day. But anyway, the reality mod mm. is uh, available now. Was that now? <laughs> that was now. Um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's pretty mental. Crazy. Mm. Like, very cool. Very cool. I don't know why it's not four or another game. Maybe it's just easier to mod, but you have to have the full... There's some caveats to it, like you have to have Battlefield 3 and certain versions of it, I think, from what I was reading. So, it's crazy. Normally, like, ModDB will, sh will give you the files to roll your game back with that sort of thing. Normally what happens. Oh, interesting. There'll be, like, a link to get to an old version so you can download that version to replace your existing version, or you delete certain lines of code. It's, it's, a, it's a bit of a thing, but it's doable. So the next story, which I've actually set as my wallpaper <laughs> already, <laughs> uh, is NASA's released the first photos from the James Webb Telescope, which is, I mean, I saw this one, I thought it was a bit weird. Mm. It looks weird with all the sort of weird stretchy lines, but I suppose it would have to be because of the, the way they're doing it and the way they're capturing yeah. it. And then if you read the comments on this, people are just saying, oh, they've just copy and pasted the same star into multiple places. <laughs> which is just a very cynical way of uh, <laughs> Not God forbid, I mean, galaxies happen to look the same, you know. <laughs> yeah. Like, but then, look, stare at stars, see what they look like. But then some of the other images are, are crazy. So this one, mm. I think Hubble's taken this one in the past. Uh -huh. But this is obviously a lot closer detail. It's pretty nuts to see like, yeah. the cosmic gases and things that you can see through. Yeah. and just the level of detail that it's capturing. So it's already capturing quite a, a few different things. Oh, yeah, this was one of the other ones. Oh. Stefan's Quintet, Southern Ring Nebula. So there's a lot of stuff that they've apparently kept. One of the other things was uh, looking at the atmosphere, and I was watching mm. um, Star Talk, which is a podcast about all this different stuff, with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about this with one of the people from NASA that does this. So they're analysing planets to work out whether they've got um, atmosphere 
right. based on how close they are to their sun, but also like the reflections from the surfaces and stuff, and the shadow that the planet casts on the sun. So it's all sort of clever detail in in what they were working out. But I remember reading about one of the ones they worked out might have water on it, but it was also really close to the sun, so it wouldn't be habitable and things like that. But there's people dedicated to using the James Webb Telescope specifically to look for exoplanets that could have life or could have water on them. So they're doing all sorts of things with this. And then they're also using it to try and look back as far as possible to see the beginning of the Big Bang, to stretch as far mm. through the universe to see as far back as they could. I think James Webb... Um, the Hubble telescope had managed to look back 13 billion light years or something. Yeah. But there was like 300 million more light years that they couldn't reach <laughs> that they think it's actually, and since that time, it's actually carried on expanding as well. So yeah. And then also James Webb, as so you could just go on forever about this, but the James Webb telescope is apparently being used to prove Stephen Hawking's last theory before he died on the multiverse concept oh. that, yeah, <laughs> our planet and us as people in... in specific people and the actions you've done are actually being repeated in other universes and that there's some sort of thing that's way beyond my <laughs> comprehension about how when the Big Bang started essentially it also split off into multiple universes and there's potential uh, for okay, using yeah. the James Webb telescope to work that all out and that's a fascinating that makes that's some fascinating watching and listening that does make sense I get that I get that so it's they, my theory about yeah sorry go on I was going to say it's my theory about deja vu um, <clears throat> when you get it, it's that you've had a dream about it, but instead of having a dream, you just your mind went to another universe. You saw it happen first. That's why, stuff, that's why stuff's always slightly different, but not quite the same when it really happens. But there we go. That's me. You seen the most recent Doctor Strange film? Yes. <laughs> the dream. Mm. Your dreams are actually that someone else's multiverse experience. Well, this that, that's see the, the weird thing is I've had that fear for a while, and then they said it I was like, oh my god, they said thing. They've stolen your idea. They've stolen my idea. I never told anyone. <laughs> they, they've got my dream journal. Um, so yeah, but um, so, it's interesting. It's pretty cool. It's mad. I wonder if we ever will be able to see like right to the very point. Like, there's just like black, just a black screen, and just like a little spark just happening. In the middle of it, That'd be yeah, mad. it's crazy, isn't it? Like, boom, just, just some guy with a stick of well, where did it dynamite uh, plunges? Like, there's so much <laughs> I'd like to know about it. I don't have the time to look into. Like, <laughs> like the black, uh, the beginning of the Big Bang obviously started a long time ago. So where are we yeah. in that part of? We're not at the end, are we? N well, well, it depends how long the universe, uh, thing lasts. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think where been... do we come in terms of where the explosion happened? Because the explosion is 13 billion uh... light years away. Where are we? We're not at the other end of it, are we? <laughs> like, I don't understand really the concept. Well, no, because it's like it's still it's expanding outwards infinitely. Yeah. And that's the yeah. other thing that gets me expanding into what? Into what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I know. That's the thing. I think it's, I think it's the idea is there just is literally nothing. Like, there is no. No, because when I watched this video about how the universe ends, and it goes on for quintillions of years, and it's like eventually it it follows like this CGI style. This is when it's like the planets die, the you know matter dies, and eventually everything gets sucked into just one big, 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 big black hole in the end. And eventually this black hole just starts to slow and slow and slow. And he said eventually even the time itself just is gone. There's nothing, nothing physical, no gravity. Everything disintegrates. And then there's nothing left. And they said at that point, they think it just collapses in on itself and then triggers it again, <laughs> um, which is probably what's happened before because it would have to have happened before for this to happen. So it, I think it's beyond human conception at the moment, yeah. honestly. Which is probably why it's easier just to believe it's either all a simulation or it's flat earth and that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I think, I suppose, if you imagine it, you just live inside a bubble or inside a balloon. And the more people fill up the balloon, the more space there is to live in. And then just don't think about what's outside that balloon. That's, the <laughs> yeah. of, that's just the best way of looking at it. There's nothing outside that balloon. It doesn't exist until... Your concept of existence is based on gravity and time and physics and atoms that can touch each other. So if there's none of that is there, then technically none of that exists. So there is nothingness because there's nothing that relates to us as a species that we would even idealize as existence so yeah mind-blowing 
<sighs> yeah. And then on the other side of it, NASA's been doing stuff on Earth as well. So there's some scientists oh, looking at sneaky. basically taking ocean readings. They've oh. been looking at combining color and sediment data with musical notes, basically creating music based on the flow of the oceans and such. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty weird. Okay. <laughs> interesting way of looking at it it's a little weird there's there's a guy on tiktok who um has a synthesizer and what he does is he places it because it can pick up electrical impulses he puts electrodes into sort of like wild mushrooms and things and then plays with the thing till he gets music from them uh-huh. that's quite cool maybe it's similar to that yeah but i like watching that guy he like plugs it he clips it onto plants and things and all sorts and runs the power through them and then he gets all these really cool sounds from them because it's electrical Stimulus going through the plants and being different. So weird. Maybe it's like that. Weird and wonderful. I'm yeah. talking about wonderful. I think this is your discovery. My ADHD. discovery. This ADHD. Yeah, basically. So I mean, it's an American thing by a company called Endeavor RX. So basically, it's an app kind of game, like you would imagine, built um, with help with neuroscientists that stimulates and improves areas of the brain that help with attention. So basically you get these little superhero creatures and you're given various tasks and it kind of helps you, the, the, it's supposed to help you improve your focus and your concentration on things based on what the game is. So it kind of gives you multiple things to do at once, that kind of thing. Um, but they've started rolling it out. It's been prescribed to children in America. Yeah. It's like, nice it's like an ADHD treatment. Um, so they play this for like an hour or two a day and it kind of just is supposed to help Probably more than any sort of medication, I imagine. Maybe it's a replacement for education. It doesn't say if it's a replacement specifically for the medication. But Yeah, well, the example was this one kid that couldn't take the meds because it gave him really bad migraines. There we go. And then he did playing on this game that helped him focus and multitask and avoid distraction. Yeah. And I was obviously like, reading this because my son's autistic and has ADHD, so mm-hmm. it was like, interesting. But there, there's... Yeah. Another company in the UK yes, that's yeah. looking to... Yeah, so we go, London... App Firmware is using computer games to help me, doctors yeah. and other medical professionals detect it. It's not quite the same thing. But the the, the one that you're talking about, they're looking to roll it out in Europe as well, so maybe it'll come. But the fact uh, it has to be prescribed is weird. Like, yeah, it's a, it's a bit odd, but I suppose it's... It, I imagine if you don't... If you think you've got ADHD and you might not have ADHD, playing this game that creates an, an alteration to a neurological pathway in your brain probably isn't a good thing to do. So that's probably what it is, because if it is properly working on the in the background level, um, it's like sometimes was there a game that used to do that? I vaguely remember there being some sort of game once that was kind of kicked around, but it had something underneath the screen, like there was a background image that was flashing around that used to do something better. I'm probably talking rubbish. Anyway, um, yeah. So this is pretty cool. Subliminal I messaging. Think. Yeah, kind of like that. Um, but I don't know what it was doing. I just remember there being a story about it, but I'll find it for another time. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think this is quite cool. And then like I say this, this story kind of spirals off into other games that have been designed to help people like that one with depression and things. So I like it. I think it's good that these sort of things can really help. I mean, I know there's <clears throat> sometimes you can play a game and it actually helps you because it, it deals with things that you're going through or you see things that you're linked to. And I suppose that also kind of creates like, why people get so attached to certain games as well. Um, but it's nice to see people taking it seriously, because I know people kind of... Sometimes game creators create a game as therapy for themselves, and it helps other people. But for people to go, actually, no, this is a visual and mental input that is actually useful. Because there's always been talk, you know, that, you know, games make you bad or go or make you do things. But the more people... I know more people that have done well because they play games, like they play Minecraft or they play building games or construction games or things that got them to think logically about stuff and then when they get into the real, into the world and start doing jobs they're sort of like, well I know how to do this because I've been playing games like this I know how to you know project manage or organize things it just comes yeah. more naturally to people that are more apt at those kind of games so I think it's good that we've started to use this and um I hope it gets better I think like you know imagine if you you could do anything really like if you're suffering from like some sort of traumatic experience, maybe some sort of VR game might help you through it. Like you can just immerse yourself in something for a while and it might help like any sort of PTSD thing, that kind of thing. There's, there's a whole world of things that you can do, especially if you think how much VR tricks your brain into thinking something is real. Like 
like that plank game where you fall off the plank because it's too high or whatever. Like you know that kind of thing. Like it creates the the sensation of it being real. I think there's a lot we could do. Again. So this was quite cool. I know it's only just a tap bit game. That's just you know, put that on your iPad and you'll be fine. But I think the future of this kind of tech is going to be quite good. In the future. Yeah. Well, games do have a lot of benefits. People do complain about them a lot, don't they? Mm. Or try and blame them for things. But they they're... they do because it's easy. If it wasn't rock music, it was games. <laughs> before before music. It was books. There's literally a a, a, a newspaper article from like eighteen something saying, "Why are these kids reading all these books?" And now everyone's <laughs> they're, they're going to warp their minds. And then. <laughs> Literally, like it was literally in London Times. I was complaining about everyone reading books and how it's it's just a fad that won't last. And then literally now they're like, "Well, why don't they read a book?" <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so stupid. Every time something new comes along, someone comes. But I think this is a good. This is a good step. I like this. Yeah, absolutely. I like my kids playing games because it's better for it improves hand eye coordination and things like that. Absolutely, so. absolutely. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. And uh, then turn your segue into Magic Leap, oh, yes. which actually isn't for people generally. It's going to be aimed at businesses, but Magic Leap 2 is uh, apparently yeah. coming and it's going to cost oh, 3299 <laughs> or 4999 US dollars for the Enterprise version. Well, apparently it's new and improved and it has all sorts mm-hmm. of things. It has a wider field of view at 70 degrees. Each eye talking to a taking peak 2.5 million pixels worth of content on 120 hertz refresh rate and it's got 4k cameras it's able to capture 4k onto 256 on board storage but it's really interesting to see more and more companies making these sort of thin easy yeah. wearables right and obviously yeah. facebook's been pushing what they're doing but a lot of uh, a lot of these brands seem to be going after enterprise and businesses rather than people at the moment yeah Oh, the text is not there, or yeah, it's it's what I think the consumer market isn't there. Yeah, Um, because like to play a high quality VR game, would you need like a thousand pound headset and like a thousand pound computer? People aren't going to pay that at the moment. There's Um, also talk about this being used for the metaverse as well. This is metaverse uh, gear, so everything's meta. I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe I don't think it will take off with this generation. I think if they get enough of it into the next generation. I think it'll just be second-hand nature to them, and they'll just be used to it. Um, it'll just be where they interact. There could be some benefits to this when we were talking a minute. I was thinking about the metaverse, because mm-hmm. I think it's guffy and nonsense, and I wouldn't want to do it. But if you were suffering from, let's say, depression or yeah. agoraphobia or something, you didn't want to go outside, mm-hmm. maybe the metaverse is a good way to socialise with people Oh yeah, no, feel definitely. like you're out a bit more. Yeah, it's kind of... Th- I think the problem is it's because it's so commercialised at the moment. That's yeah. what the problem is. Like, the only people you... Like, I've, I've seen videos where people have gone into these zones and the only people there are the people paid to be there. <laughs> and they're having a conversation with people and like, oh, that's great. Okay, before you leave, could you give a like to this? Maybe say that you'd be willing to buy some beer? Like, <laughs> if you saw it in a store, because that would really help me out. And like, what is happening? Like, so this whole interaction they've had with someone which they thought was really positive was actually just rubbish really salesperson or something salesperson. Yeah. i mean there was a there was a bbc um panorama where someone went into it was supposed to be about metaverse but um she spent one day metaverse the rest of the time was vr chat so it's not even metaverse and then it was cut it was kind of geared towards oh look how dangerous it is for women in vr chat and it's sort of like well, you're just in the wrong place, really. Like, if you go to some seedy part of the VR chat, you're going to get a little weirdos being weird and talking. Go to the bit with all the knuckles clicking. That's that's still positive. That's fun. They'll just come over and ask you if you know the way. It'll be great. Or go, or go to like you know the Gundam bit and watch people beat each other, shouting out lines from a film. Like, it was it was a bit one sided, um, and kind of made it very good, which I thought was a bit stupid, really, because um, again, it was supposed to be a metaverse, but um. I know there's things in place for Metaverse, but it just feels because it's they're pushing it as a here, buy this space, sell your products. That's the problem. I think it needs to be user generated more. But it depends how it goes. Sony had one. So I don't know if you remember this. Sony had something called Zony Home. Um it wasn't VR based, it was just like like Second Life, really. Like you kind of used to just walk around. Right. Um but each of the zones were basically appeared or disappeared based on the sponsorship that month. So they'd be like, oh, it's a new experience. Okay, is that brought to you by this game or brought to you by this company? You're like, oh, 
So it was like something vaguely a game that was vaguely linked, like you play like table tennis, and it was linked to like Wimbledon or whatever, or companies that sponsor Wimbledon, that kind of thing. So it was kind of like a tenuous. It was a, a vaguely funded activity, tenuously linked. Weird. And I, think, and I think that's the problem I have with all these things, because I just kind of want a free space where I can exist for a bit and be, <laughs> or just build what I want. That kind of thing. Like if I could build my own place. Like my own kind of city in VR, that'd be really cool. Uh, especially if it's like real scale. The time it would take would be amazing. Oh. <laughs> God, can you imagine? Anyway, but, tell you yeah, a, yeah. Tell you a segue. Tell you a segue. Sony. Talk about Sony. Yeah, talk about Sony. Sony wants to be the Nike of gaming peripherals or Nike. What, what, does, what does that mean? Well, they think that there's nobody, um, no, there's no dominant leader. In, established in uh, the gaming peripheral space and headsets and whatever else and so they want to dominate it they want to be like the Nikes so they were saying about they're basically going to go after esports players so we're going to start at the top and learn what the top esports players want uh, okay. vision in mind uh, to basically be like Nike does providing shoes for athletes you can win prize money in esports so if your monitor lags slightly and you lose Sony's products aren't going to let people down so it looks like they want to basically make the best possible products oh, I see. for PC gamers and others and then dominate that space which I suppose mm. makes some sense I mean they've done pretty well with PlayStation why can't they come in but I mean there's a lot of big brands out there already, isn't there? There's going to be some stiff well, competition. This is true. I mean, the only reason I think there isn't a, a dominant lead is because people, all the people that are influencers get stuff for free. So they're not buying it themselves. They're just being given the latest stuff by certain companies. And certain companies give certain things to certain people. So some people have like SteelSeries and some people have Razer and some people have other oh, than HyperX, you know, <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know if there is a dominant thing because I think they all kind of are pretty much the same now. It's just there's so many brands of them because they've all just reached parity with each other in one way or another, personally. There's a lot of similarities between yeah. the products and nothing really stands out. I, I think, much. I think, event, yeah, I think eventually you kind of settle on a brand that you like and you enjoy and you try to gear yourself towards I say that as I sit here with a steel series keyboard, a um a Rocat mouse and a HyperX microphone <laughs> and, and AKG headphones. But um I think it is possible that people sign just go, oh, no, I like I like Razor, I'm just gonna get Razor. Oh, I like Steel Series, I'm just gonna oh, get definitely Razor. your average gamer uh, mm. there are average people that would buy everything from one yeah, what? Because you, you know it all works together, especially when it's got like a software that can run all the lights and things. You yeah, kind of or just you just think, same, which is you? probably what Sony wants. You just think, oh, these guys are the best. Like Razer's the best. Yeah, oh, I want to raise a keyboard. Yeah. I want to raise a mouse. I want to raise a headset. Yeah, Whereas, you kind of see. Yeah, like you say, you have a mix. I have a mix. Um, mm. Logitech does my favorite keyboard. I'm probably Steel Series would be my main mouse. I'm currently using mm. a Steel Series headset, but. I don't know if it's my favourite, and then obviously sure <laughs> microphones. That's not even gamers stuff. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, like, I mean, Samsung's pretty dominant in. The, I mean, Sony's thing was saying that there was nobody dominant in the monitor space, and they can do better. That was a thing when they talked to me about the um, gaming monitor. Yeah. So when I tested out the gaming monitor a while back, mm. and that was their main pitch: is that no one is dominant in that area, and they should do well because they've got the Bravia televisions. Yeah, yeah. So they should do better. So, um, oh no, that's the wrong one. Uh, that's actually so. <laughs> that's Samsung's. Uh, <laughs> I was looking to see if I had the video at hand. I don't think I do. Mm. But a, I guess I do. There it is. So this is a their tiny PlayStation esque monitor. So it's got like a <laughs> PlayStation looking bezel at the bottom. Yeah, They're trying to make it better, but the specs still weren't the bleeding edge. They weren't as no. good. But it, it is good though, and they do. I was impressed by it. Yeah. And I think that, like they said, they do have the Bravia sort of side, so they know what they're doing with television. Yeah. So if they can translate that into monitors. Well, they're, they're all big high-tech, you know, electronics companies, so they should, generally, you think they should. I'm surprised, to be fair, there aren't Samsung PCs by now, or Sony PC. I'm surprised Sony hasn't just gone, you know, we should just make a PC for gaming with parts, because that would make sense. Because they've got the skill behind it, and they could easily do it, or they could work with like Nvidia or AMD or someone. Just go look, we're building a PC, make a graphics card for us, and then they could put that graphics card into the into the Sonys, and then have native 
1080p or whatever it is they're going for now, 1440. You know, because, yeah. you know, I mean, Microsoft does it, but Sony doesn't anymore. It feels like they're kind of getting left behind. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, we're interested to see what happens. It will be. It will be. Their move into into that space anyway. Yeah. Um, now I've got to close this down for some reason. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> uh, t- Rubik's Cube next. Or well, wow yeah, Cube. It's, it's called. I keep, I keep getting adverts for this now since I looked at it, which is quite funny. Oh, um, damn you. Just, now, what have you done? It, to <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Whip. Um, intrigued me because when I first saw it, um, I was like, oh, it's like a, just a kid's thing, like a like cube, because there's all these kind of apps you can install on it. Um, I thought, oh, that's kind of cool because it's kind of different. So it's just, it changes as it goes. So, like, you can play all sorts of different games on it. But then if you scroll all the way down to the bottom. God, you've got to pay so like microtransaction games. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, basically. Um, but once you go all the way down to the bottom, um, it also is a broadcaster thing. Um, uh, if you go up a bit, there's a bit that says widgets. There we are. Um, top left hand square. Yeah. Oh, right. Widgets. Um, so it, it displays like um, Instagram or like feeds or weather or all kinds of things. So when you're not busy playing with it, it's like one of those little mini information screens. It mm. can have like a little aquarium on it. It can just be like a smart lamp or a timer. It does loads of other things. And I thought, actually, that suddenly makes it a lot more interesting um, compared with it just being like a toy, like a, a 20, 21st century Rubik's Cube. Um, I was like, actually, that's quite a cool thing. Um, and it's also got, you know, the source code for it, so you can make it do whatever you want, really. Um, but I just thought... Eight when speakers? Was... Yeah, I know, eight right? modules, 24 screens, eight speakers. You know, right? And it, insane. It's absolute, it's insane. So, yeah, so it's full of games. So um, you pre-order yourself one for $300. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's expensive. expensive. But um, I, just, I just thought, oh, that's actually a bit cooler than I thought it would be. Um, because I saw it, I thought, all oh, right, it's just a, just a fancy thing. But um, yep, no, there's the widgets. There's um, oh, we got you. You can get your Gmail on it. You can get your camera. You can get your egg timers. You can get stocks. Why do we have stocks anyway? Um, weather, all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I just thought it was kind of fancy. It's weird. It's um, unusual. It's weird. And expensive, but it's quite a cool middle ground, I think. Um, I like things that are multiple purpose sometimes, like a screen that does everything. Um, <laughs> but it's basically just like a, a 3D tablet, I suppose. But I liked it. I thought it was cool. I thought it was show. You, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I would yeah. buy one, but it's interesting. I don't, yeah, not at this price, no. I think if, when the, the third gen's out and it's like under quid, maybe, or less than that, then it might be tempting, um, depending on if the games are any better. Um, but it just looks fun, you know, there's puzzle games, there's like all sorts of smart amps and aquariums. You get them for free. You have the little fake fish swimming around, which is quite funny. Um, loads of stuff. Literally an egg timer, um, <laughs> which is really funny, like a design. Just pour sand in, which I thought was quite good. When you um, said it was a broadcast thing, I thought you meant like you could use it like this. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the skill. So, <laughs> so Razer's doing a stream controller. Uh, Say Cornel Gatto's Steam Stream Deck, which I thought mm. was interesting because this is actually, to my knowledge, the third time that Razer's basically taken an El Gatto idea and made their own. They've got the <laughs> Ra- they've got the Razer Keylight Chroma, which is basically yes. El Gatto's Keylight but with RGB. They've yes. got the Razer Audio Mixer, which is basically, in fairness, actually let's go XLR. Is like to go <laughs> XLR, but El Gatto also did a. Or um, XLR interface recently, mm. which is actually a lot smaller, and yeah. now they're doing this stream controller, which is like this the Stream Deck. And what I thought was interesting is it looks like a um, a Loop Deck, and mm. funnily enough, that's because it is. <laughs> so they've teamed up with Loop Deck to oh, create okay. this. Are you aware of Loop Deck already? Yeah. Um, I actually looked at their things a while back because I was curious because you can use loop deck so this is loop deck mm-hmm. they have a lot of different interfaces and you can actually see yeah. it basically looks like the same thing so there's yeah. loop deck live s and that's basically what Razer's rebranded it so they've got loop, loop, loop deck live 
Then what it does is it gives you oops, wrong one. Uh, hardware level controls over your streaming mm. stuff. But you've got dials, you've got buttons, and you can do yeah. other things with it. It's got 12 haptic LCD keys and then analog mm. dials on either side of the screen. And obviously you can use it all for your stream controls. But it also work with other things like Spotify and uh, native plugins for uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, After mm. Effects. You can use it for oh, of course, hue yeah. lighting and Spotify and OBS. So lots of Every potential. Yeah, I everything think. the other stuff does. And I'd like some swift controls. I just started using DaVinci Resolve for my editing and I found it oh, a yeah, bit yeah. of an adjustment. And I know that Loop Deck does sort of, you can use that with those fine granular controls. So rather than mm. doing a keyboard, obviously you can have the shortcuts set up for whatever you'd want, where you can just press the buttons, but also you could use yeah. the dials to tweak things. So I was intrigued by that. And then this popped up about the stream controller. And so, yeah. And there are other things that Razer seems to be copying other people on as well. So <laughs> they've got a lot of things coming out. I think it's good to see them expanding the range mm. of things they're doing. Elgato did the same thing. They came out with a lot. Of, just seem to be coming out with a lot of different products lately, and mm. a wider range. So it's pretty cool to see competition out there. I don't know if most people would pick up a Razer Stream Deck instead of Elgato's because Elgato's been around for so long. Mm. I think they've kind of established a name for themselves. <laughs> I think they are the dominant brand in that yeah, sort of space. Yeah, I think, I think if you need to do stuff on the fly, like say you um. You make music online, like live or something, or things like that. Um, I think you might want it because you get that extra kind of sensational touch where you can do stuff. Because Stream Deck, you kind of have to have it set up ready to go ahead of time and pre plan what's going to happen. So you've got a button for it. You can't really do it on the fly. But um, maybe. Having the dials and things, yeah, it could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. You could, you could if you say, oh, suddenly it doesn't work or something, I need to adjust this or whatever, then that works. But um, yeah. Yeah, it's neat. Extreme. It's neat that they actually it's, partnered. It's cool. They partnered yeah. with Loop Deck. I think is actually better but, than I mean, trying to release their own. I feel like maybe you could probably just do all this with a Loop Deck anyway, and it'll probably be cheaper than the Razer version. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Like, I feel, I feel like that what all Razer's going to add to it is maybe some RGB. Yeah, so this is the actual <laughs> Loop Tech Live. Yeah, but it it does. It's got integration with Twitch and stuff already, hasn't it? Like, as far as I remember. <sighs> Um, I was just curious. All right, so Razer Stream Control is two six nine, and yeah, it's the same price. Same yeah. price for the loop. Yeah, so it is I, I, more expensive. I, I think it's yeah. I, th I think it's just. I probably sell more just because it's branded with Razer. It's right? because it's got a Razer brand. Yeah, average people probably, probably wouldn't think. Oh, I'll get a loop deck. They probably wouldn't even yeah. know what that is. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Um. But yeah, I mean, I, I think it looks pretty cool. But, yeah, no, it does look cool. I think if I did more kind of graphics or editing this kind of stuff, I would probably, I don't need, felt like I needed it. I think it'd be quite a good tool to have, but I don't think it would replace a stream deck for streaming or anything like that because that's just plug and play, isn't it? And drop and drag. It's just. Yeah, they're really good to use, like the foldering and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that craziness. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the other craziness that I saw earlier this week. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this madness. So BMW has got a heated seat subscription in the UK. And mm. so you can pay £15 a month to have heated front seats in your car and £10 a month <laughs> to heat your steering wheel. <laughs> and the, uh, this is insane because uh, BMW said, well, you can pay up front for this or you can choose to do it. And also they're saying it's useful for second car second-hand car owners so if you buy a car off somebody and they didn't have heated seats now you can get it because you can just pay the subscription so all the hardware is already there but it's blocked at software level which is such a like, why do we live in this microtransactional world where you can buy yeah, a car now it, where you can't use parts just, of it that's just ridiculous though because then you're buying the same car as you would so you're still buying like a top spec fully kitted out car but then are you getting the car cheaper than you would if you bought it? I don't, it's confusing. Yeah, I guess you must still... be getting it cheaper. Well, how are but... you though? Like, or are you, or are you just paying top spec money for a car, and then whoever wants to buy it with all the features enabled is paying even more money for it? Yeah, because uh, that's just stupid. They're not. The, like, it's not BMW. Is not the first people to do it, though. Are they? I think you hear hear about it from other brands, but it's just like 
I can't believe. I mean, there's been sort of there's been subscriptions for sort of proper things like you know internet services or like what, what's the thing the Americans have when you crash? Um, Armstar is it? Yeah, like when you have an accident yeah. and you press something because I I've got an my car has an S I never pressed it but it's got an SOS button in the dash in the in the top right. next to the, and I don't know what it does. But I'm assuming it's like an OnStar kind of thing. Like if I press it, you go, oh, you know, hello, what's happened? That kind of thing. That's what I think it is anyway. But I never pressed it. I need to probably look at it, really, but I've never needed it. Um, but, I know my yeah, friend this, pays for some services in his Tesla, and I think you have to pay for some of like the autopilot stuff, I think. It's not there. Yeah, some of those you will have to, yeah, and like, or to have them... But again, they're pre existing really things that are there ready for yeah. action, but you have to pay for them. But the fact yeah. that, I mean, paying for heated seats is just insane. Obviously, paying yeah, for that's... self driving part of your vehicle is like reasonable, but having to yeah, pay for Yeah, well, in, in, a, in, a, in a way, it is. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, this is this is mad, and I don't think they're going to get any, and I think it's going to buy horrendously. Because, um, <laughs> you know, for some reason, they just listen to think tanks, don't they? Where people go, oh, people love subscriptions. People, of course, people pay for subscriptions. Services I'm like oh okay are you sure like, oh yeah, yeah yeah not thinking this isn't the world that it doesn't live you don't live in that kind of system of cars yet um like there's car subscription services but you get the whole bloody car you don't just get a, <laughs> a, a, a service of the car it's like well I pay for lights next it's ridiculous so yeah talk about subscription services mm. <laughs> oh yeah we have mixed feelings about this one don't we because I was talking about I was talking about this with my wife earlier on because mm. um. We like Lower Decks. It's yeah. a good series, but now, because it, it was on Disney and now it's going to be on Paramount Plus. Yes. Which I'm upset by because I don't want to pay another subscription because we already pay <laughs> for Netflix and Amazon and Spotify and Disney. Yeah. I don't really want to pay another one. But she was like, well, we, we're cancelling Sky, so maybe we could afford it. Well, this this is it. Like When I I used to have um, Now TV and Sky Movies, which was about £22 a month for both things individually. Um, both together, um, and that got worse and worse progressively. And I said I didn't need movies anymore, so I've replaced that since with Disney Plus and now Paramount Plus because I've got Paramount Plus. But you know, you're not you're not buying Paramount Plus. Oh, I'm not going to try and sell Paramount Plus, but you, you, you're not just buying you're not just buying it just for that one thing. There are other things on that channel, and all the things Paramount makes, there will be more stuff. I know, but it's just work. another it, subscription. It is, but that's just the way everything's going at the moment. Until eventually, someday, there's some company kind of just goes look we're gonna we're gonna do a thing like for a hundred pound a month hundred pound a year or whatever or whatever much a year this is a service that will have all these subscriptions running under it and you can just watch all of them and you pay us the money and we give the money to them and they work it out somehow as a system then that's where you that's are, what i want them. i think i've said this before because yeah i want a service where you can just watch <laughs> anything you want you want the mood takes you you want to watch it mm. and I, an example was the other week i really wanted to watch interstellar because i was going through that port where i was really just oh, into yeah. space stuff and then someone mentioned interstellar and i was like, oh yeah that was such a good film i love that film mm-hmm. i want to watch it let's see if you can stream it anywhere i went on netflix it wasn't on there i went on prime no. it wasn't on there no. <laughs> i looked on just watch which is a site and an app that you can use to find out where things are streaming and it notifies you when they do appear, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I'd recommend that if you've not seen it. Um, and it said it wasn't anywhere. <laughs> and I looked and it wasn't on Disney Plus either. And I'm like, oh, yeah. so I ended up having to buy it. And I already had it. And then my wife reminded me that I actually had already bought it on DVD. <laughs> not that we've got yeah. a DVD player anymore. But so this, just, is the, this is the thing. Yeah, there's there's some things I bought that I've kept the DVDs of, but my DVD player isn't plugged in anywhere because I just don't. I bet if I dug out that DVD, wherever the hell it is, I'd probably have a digital download code for the film that probably doesn't work <laughs> anymore because it'd be on some site that doesn't oh, exist. Oh yeah, I had a load of like ultraviolet ones um, that you could download and install. I think they're on an old iPad, iPod somewhere, like one of the old, one of the one of the big. I used to have one of the big, not the, the big thick white one. I have got a big thick white. One. We had one of the first ones, but then I've got one of the, like the mid-range thick ones that had a screen because I used to watch loads of stuff on that at one point. Um, but yeah, it's just the way stuff is at the moment. Um, I don't know how much other things there would be on there, though. There's the new Star Trek series, right? What's that called? Uh, Strange New Worlds. Yeah, that um, one. It's very, very good. Strange New Worlds, yeah. Um, the new Picard will be on there when that comes out next year. All right. Um, and I saw the new Strange New Worlds. Um, I think there's some other Star Trek being developed. There's a Halo uh, series, but I don't There's a really Halo series, there, but I mean, I watched the first episode and it was a bit boring. What was it? Um, it's kind of... Oh god, it's like it reminds me of like 
old early 2000s sci-fi like like stargate but not as interesting <laughs> like it, the 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 format is kind of that way like the first episode was just a bit the graphics are good but i don't th- i never grew up playing halo no i didn't play because it. it was on xbox and i know now i'm xbox as a kid so it wasn't a thing for me so i'm not like oh my god he's mad to cheat so i don't really care about it being halo i just want to watch it as a sci-fi and it didn't grab me as a sci-fi right because it's a bit tropey so my problem with these you know. these pro- the other problem with these services i just don't i just can't keep track of what we're watching sometimes i sit down <laughs> like what are we watching I can't yeah. remember. Like what, what was it? Was it on Prime or was it on Netflix? <laughs> we watch this on Netflix, don't we? Yeah. Oh yeah, but they're only releasing that one episode at a time. But this other show has been just dropped the whole thing. Yeah, once. I kind of wait for stuff now to come out. Um, I wait till it's all out and then I'll just watch it. And then you've got like Stranger Things recently. They released like most of the series and then they're like the last two. Yeah, the final two. Yeah, yeah. Broken yeah. up like six that weeks was, later or something. That, that like, one's kind of cool. That cut well, that's just keep interest really. But that oh, was I love Stranger cool. Things. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, and I th- I thought that worked. Quite quite well for them to be fair i thought it's quite a good system and the last two were really good and they um, were long as well so they were worth the yeah they're proper movies weren't they so that was a good way of doing it um and i went bad mouth netflix because i really do like netflix although i do feel like i've completed it lately sometimes i just like oh, i don't know what to watch on here i haven't got anything and it keeps yeah, recommending I, stuff I've I, seen. I, like you want to watch yeah, this I've, no i've seen it yeah i started getting that as well it started showing me this like oh you should watch the documentary it's like i've absolutely seen that documentary <laughs> um so i wish it would start it started to forget that like, i've watched stuff and then recommend it again. So that's a bit annoying. But um, yeah, I, I don't always know. I think, mark I think... whether I've watched. I'd give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down, so I mm. know whether I've seen it or not. It's the only way uh, to remember. That, make, that makes sense. Yeah. But no, no I think on. I think Netflix has started to lose a lot of stuff. Um, as like it's like you know it used to be the place for things, but now everyone's got their own service. It's kind of disappearing. And that's so, the same with Paramount Plus, isn't it? Because these things are on Disney Plus, and now they're going on to Paramount Plus. So Disney's going to yeah. lose that. So if you bought Disney specifically for these, now you've just lost those. But maybe yeah, Disney's but keeping you with something else, like Dis- Disney's got, a bit of Marvel. Disney, or... Oh, Disney's got the the Marvel and Star Wars stuff. Can Disney's fantastic, so you've got no worries there. Oh, and there's maybe a load one, of which was awful. Really? I didn't mind it. Oh, I thought um, it was really boring. <laughs> it was really boring. I, I love you and McGregor, but it was just yeah. not a good story. And I did the fight between him and Vader was a bit naff. I just thought it, it, it you knew it couldn't go anywhere, so it was like nothing's well, gonna that's, happen. That's the problem, isn't it? When it's the kind of thing, yeah, because like I'm looking forward to like the um Andor series, but that's a prequel to Rogue One, so you know exactly where it's going to get to at some point. Um, yeah, which is kind of like a bit like, oh, uh, well, I did I like the Mandalorian, I thought that was great. Mandalorian's fantastic. I really like Book of Boba Fett, even though some people had issues with it, but I thought it was really quite good. Yeah, I enjoyed even it. Even halfway, so. halfway through, it became the Mandalorian point, 2.5, but still, whatever. Um, still good. <laughs> uh, Rogue One is coming out on that, and that'd be really good. And then there's just a ton of Marvel stuff coming out soon, so all gravy for me. Um, <laughs> Amazon kind of lost stuff. I'm quite enjoying the boys. Um, yes, and in in September it's Lord of the Rings, so we we'll have to see if that's any good. Um, I've seen it. Uh, there's a few mm-hmm. great shows on Prime. The Outer Range was fantastic. Did you watch that one? Where they're mm-hmm. on the farm, and then a hole appears in the ground, and it does weird no. stuff. I'd recommend that. That one was really good. And then mm-hmm. there's another one called Night Sky. You seen that one? No. Uh, this old couple basically have. Um, a, hot, a a room in their basement that seems to take them to another planet where they sit inside like a room where they can see out they're on another planet and they can just see out into space and they just go and sit in this basement in oh. this room and stare out into space but then things happen and it gets a lot more interesting so it was really worth checking out it's interesting, so, interesting. So it's night sky oh, yeah. and the outer range okay. scribble that down so. scribble that down quick right now <laughs> right, right down write it down um, yeah those are great ones. But yeah, there's a few different things. But as we've said yeah. before, I think Prime's um, video, Prime I mean, video recommendation system is absolute garbage. Oh, and, and the app is terrible too. Um, just how it runs, it's just not very good. But, I mean, to be fair, Amazon I get for multiple reasons, not just because it's a TV yeah. subscription service. The TV thing was kind of a plus. Because it, it used to get Amazon like delivery, and then you had Love Film, which used to be Amazon Prime. Um, back in the old days, um, because Love Film was the UK version of Netflix before Netflix got here. Um, yeah, and they've just and they took it over, and they just don't seem to improve the user experience. Like <laughs> no, they have. Yeah, 
And it's weird because yeah, Amazon's no, they... obviously good at sort of recommending and knowing what you want to buy when it You'd comes imagine. to products. Yeah, but not but, for um, films. No, they're not very. It's just not a very good UI. But hopefully, it will get fixed. <laughs> um, doesn't seem like it's going to. No, not really. But um, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, they're the only ones that I really have anymore, like that Disney, Netflix, and thingy. Um, there's loads of others. Like my parents have got BritBox, but it's it's just old British comedies. It's not really. That's on every other. That's around all the time, really, or on YouTube. Pretty mind too much. Um, I've noticed them all started leaving Netflix as well, all the BBC stuff. Mm. So that's probably where it's all gone now. So yeah. So yeah. Um, just to see, really. On to the next one. I'm going to let, oh, let a story come in. It's going to. MetaQuest headsets will start requiring a Facebook account. They require a Meta Meta account instead. What was the difference? Oh yeah, that's fine. I really hate that Facebook's changing the um, umbrella companies of fate to Meta. It's it's I don't mind that. It's just I don't want it to suddenly tell everyone what I'm playing on a headset or try to invite them all to join. There was a massive uproar when they forced people to use Facebook to log in for the Quest headsets, and this was a long time ago. So it's weird that they're taking so long to roll roll it back, or even that they have done this. Yeah, I think they're realizing people don't want a Facebook account anymore. So yeah, and if you weren't using Facebook, you had to go and set it up. But then there was a problem because people would set up the account, then not use it, then their account would get closed because but Facebook thought they were bots, then they couldn't use their Quest anymore. So it was like it was ridiculous when it first became a thing but now apparently they're moving away from it so you don't need to worry anymore so I suppose that's a good thing Uh, uh, I found it interesting that actually Oculus has done so well I remember seeing something that it was Steam hardware survey suggested that Quest 2 was the best selling VR headset that was being used on Steam Mm -hmm. in the last few years and uh, that's really interesting because you think that people would go oh no it's a facebook product i'm not buying that but actually they haven't well, done that they've done the opposite no, it's 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 a 300 pound vr headset with internal tracking and no no light rigs anywhere so yeah and you can connect it to your pc with a cable yeah. or wirelessly yeah. and play vr games yeah yeah it's it's perfect i'm still thinking of getting one um you should at some point i would recommend it I probably would. I just, I just, you know, I know the minute I buy one, they'll be like, ah, number three's coming. This one, like, will be your girlfriend. Like, ah, okay. Like, <laughs> so it'll you know, be your you girlfriend. Just... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it'll be fantastic. It's like, it's like yeah, that old joke. It will be sort of based like... on what we've seen, but I think yeah. you'll always be waiting for the next one if you would. Yeah, that that's attitude. true. That's true. I've, I've got many VR games I play, really, to be fair. Like, we played that Star Trek one for a bit. Um, we could all I know do No Man's Sky. You we could all, we could do No Man's Sky. all sit in our quests. Oh my god, that would work. Um, I know, <laughs> I know a lot of uh, the group have played um, Phasmophobia in VR, and apparently that's pretty scary. But um, I, have to, I have to play sitting down because I've got a dog in the house. I end up kicking her if I'm walking around the place. Um, so <laughs> like, be panicking and not trying to hide. It's, it was Luggage's birthday recently, and I bought him one of my favourite VR games, which is The Invisible Hours, which have, is came out in 2017. But it's um, it's a really clever it's a murder mystery game so you're basically you're a detective that goes to an island and has found someone's been murdered and you've got to solve the crime but you can see what happened through other people's eyes and it's got some i can't remember the exact mechanics of it but it's basically about time dilation you rewatch stories from different people's uh, from different oh, okay. directions and stuff it's really clever it's just a really clever mechanic mm. and i think it's really good when games do something unusual and that yeah. was one of the reasons i like super hot in virtual reality because yeah. that had that sort of uh, you had mm. to punch but the faster you move the faster the enemies move yeah. so you had to sort of learn this mechanic like in normal mm. games you've got a first person shooter or something you want to shoot everyone as fast as possible but actually in super hot if you do that you get a lot more danger coming at you a lot more quickly yeah. so any well, sort of game that makes you think in a different way is really cool yeah vr any anything that is is a great like pov experience is always good for vr which i think is what they need to focus on like a lot of things just get ported but it needs to be something that it it, it needs to be what you would see as a character to experience like the the Tilt shift the the paint game um, that Google knocked out, or um, that for that King Spray one we used to play the tagging one. Yeah, that was good. That was they, they were they were they were really good and they were really fun and entertaining because it's just it's just cool and realistic feeling, and I used to enjoy those. So unusual, more like 
more like that. Any sort of eye, eye game I think I've bought in the past, and they're quite cool. Yeah, that's terrible at Kingsbury, but you did there's like, stuff. Oh, yeah, but there's like, you know, sculptures and things, but you can load the templates in, can't you? You can load a picture in and like go over it. Yeah. So yeah, that's that quite cool that. as well. I did a Banksy. <laughs> yeah, did a ba- I did a Banksy. Yeah, <laughs> so it's quite good. Uh, so yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's, I think there's, I like the creativity of it, um, and I like the spaciness of it when you can be in a cockpit of a starship. Um, what is it? Uh, Elite Dangerous is good in VR. A um, bit mad at first, but pretty good. Sorry, I was just reading the. In, uh, <laughs> I was listening. But I was reading this. Yeah. So this is the Invisible Hours uh, right. thing I was talking about. And this is this complex murder mystery in VR. I should freely explore intricate web of interwoven stories in a sprawling mansion. This is not a game. This is not a movie. This is a piece <laughs> of immersive theatre. Mm. And then there's, that's what's interesting about it. It's just it's such an unusual, yeah. quirky uh, thing. Oh, do you know what? What if there was like a, like a game where you could be in a play. Like there were scripts and things, and you went out and you had to act out this out the thing, and you had like it had like voice recognition, so you had to read the script and it would like subtitle it on the screen for you, so you could know what you had to say, and you did that, and then the the, the characters then responded in their scene, and then you did your scene. You had to be insert. Oh my god, that's great. I'm, gonna make, <laughs> I'm gonna make a game. I'm gonna make a game, Bron. I've just come up with a great idea for a VR game. You just told everybody someone else is gonna steal it now. Quick, let's move on before anybody else. Oh! <laughs> Sega Genesis Mini 2. Oh, okay. It's known as the Sega Mega Drive in our region of the world, right? Sega Mega Drive 2 in Europe in yes. 1993 was when it was originally released. And now they're releasing their... A lot of other companies seem to be doing this. There's... Nintendo mm. did their little minis, didn't they? Yeah. I don't like, really like... care for this stuff because it's just like... I don't go back and play old games because it's just... It's not like you remember it. <laughs> Well, well, no, it won't be, but I like the fact that you can plug your games into these new ones. Like, they accept the old cartridges. Do they? Yeah, I think... Just if that's, knocking about. If, well, because, it, like, you might be able to get the cartridges, but you might not be able to get the consoles. Yeah. Um, So you can plug the cartridge into it, which I think is the best bit. If this has... Does it have it? Yeah, look, it's got a little slot. Yeah, yeah. So you can plug... Because I know the... um, I don't think the... Did the Nintendo ones do it? I don't remember... I mean, if, if Nintendo made an N64 one, I'd probably get that because I remember that moist. Important. That'd be good. Like, Perfect dark. But, yeah, it'd be cool to have in the car. Um, just plug it in. But um, for those of you that can. But I get these. I get the idea of them. And like I say, if you've got the games but your console doesn't work anymore, and you, it's, the consoles are far more expensive than the games are, so it makes some sense. Um... You always see them eventually like, end up fairly cheap as well because people really want to buy them straight away for like 80 something quid and then the price drops and other people sort of buy them later. So 16 bit graphics. 16 bit! HDMI cable. Yeah, of course it's. And it's got nice. a nice range of games. Ooh, uh, fancy. The power says. range of games on it. Uh, extensive library of games. Ooh, extensive. Means. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I know there's a Power Rangers game from the, uh, 1984, so that might be on there too. So that'd be exciting. Yeah, they've m- mentioned Castlevania, Bloodline, Sonic the Hedgehog, um, Altered Beast, Streets of Rage 2, and Road uh, Rage yeah. 2. Basically, all the Sega games. Yeah, if they made a mini <laughs> dream. If they made a mini Dreamcast, I'd probably get that. <laughs> uh, I don't know. That wouldn't be able to take any external things though, because that used to run CDs. Or was it mini it's mini CDs? No, they were proper CDs, weren't they? Yeah, that runs CDs. So um C. If they made a mini in sixty four, I'd probably get that. <laughs> um never had a GameCube, and then had a Wii. So I have to see. But I, I see the place for these. Um and like I say, if you if you can't get the console anymore, or if you're super into retro things and you really want that and you haven't been able to get the console and it's a better version of it's easy to plug that into HDMI cable and stream that like on Twitch and things than it is to try to have a ridiculous setup that captures video from a oh, yeah, TV absolutely. and then transfers it to. Because a lot of the old retro gamers used to struggle with getting stuff onto Twitch, but then they sort of had emulators or these things came out and it was just a dream for them. So mm, yeah, that's a fair point. Yeah, but uh, I see the place for them, um, and I want other consoles. <laughs> 
She wants more. He wants more. I just want, I just Would want you other much, though? Uh, maybe. Like I said, I'd have it in the car. Um, for if I have to be anywhere for a bit. So. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Next story is about mm-hmm. Assassin's Creed, which you don't really fancy Assassin's Creed much anymore, do you? Not anymore, no. It's lost its way. But apparently it's going to be set in Baghdad and they're taking one oh. of the characters from Valhalla into that. Well, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> No, no. Because there was fine, a rumor maybe. it was going to be Aztec, but apparently the, the inside sources basically say it's not going to be Aztec at all. That's, that's earlier than Viking, though. Yeah, <laughs> it feels weird to go further back than when they've already gone back already. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like if it gets, if it, I don't know. It's just a bit too. It's going to be smaller in scope than recent games. Okay. Apparently, they're making it smaller. Oh. And there's I... two games in development as part of the Assassin's Creed Infinity. Because there was something ah, about yeah. it being a service game, wasn't there? I yeah. Um, though the, the Infinity one is supposed to be that way. Because you're supposed to be able to... It's supposed to be like all... I think it sounds more exciting because it's supposed to be like all the different eras of Assassin's Creed. And then you can like have your own assassin and you go on missions all throughout history. Which sounds a bit more intriguing than... A whole like a whole game set in one area that isn't particularly interesting to me. So maybe better. I'll have to see how that goes. I imagine it would work a lot like um the multiplayer did in Revolution, is it Revolution? the French one, um, whatever that was called, because that was I think the last time I really really enjoyed a an Assassin's Creed game, like three and then Black Flag and that one I think were the best ones for me. Um. Didn't really get on too well with the sort of London Victorian one that much. Um, and I haven't played any ever since because they've not interested me really. <laughs> Basically, I think it was it was really good. It had a really good storyline and the sort of drop it in and out of missions in that what's it thing is this evil company is trying to get information from you. I thought was really cool. And I thought it was leading up to sort of like a modern day kind of Assassin's Creed. Like, I thought it would be like a mix between sort of like a modern day Assassin's Creed and like the Matrix, where they kind of drop into missions to try and find information out to. Like, you got to get into, like, say, you got to get into somewhere. So, giving it's away of, game ideas. What, I just want to, what, yeah, I know, but I want people to listen and do things properly. Like, but like, well, say that like, World you, War Two Assassin's Creed. World War Two would have been great. World War, what, I mean, you got you got to climb the Eiffel Tower during the occupation, but that was about it. Um, did, you ever play, kind of, did you ever play the, the Saboteur? Uh, I think so, a while ago, yeah. Because that was World War Two, like yeah, that, that was like you were resistance, weren't you? It was ages ago, though. I remember. Ah, forever, forever, forever. It was it PS3? I feel like the PS3. Uh, I think it might have been. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I recognise. I think it had a you can line buy it for it. four pounds now. Apparently, it must be PS3 then. <laughs> it's pretty ancient. Two thousand nine. Yeah. Uh, yes, it was then. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Um, Sorry. No, no, like I say, um, yeah, that would be cool. God, I think, I think there's a good... Yeah, of course. Oh, my God. Yeah, of course. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the perfect textures. Uh, yeah, no, this is it. Like, I think um, there's such a broad scope you could do, and if they really tried, I think they could do really well, but I don't know why they... I don't know why they make the decisions they do, and I wish they'd tell people. But... Because it seems weird to go from sort of a stealthy kind of assassin game that's got this whole throughout history, but there's a company secretly trying to get memories from you, which is why they keep picking you up and doing things to, oh, that doesn't exist anymore. And now you you can talk, you have to fight gods. I think they I find still it. do some of that. I get, see, I'm the other way, because I already got bored with those bits. Whenever you get snatched back out of the animus and had to deal with the future stuff, it was always dull. And I well, that's just because it. It that's just because it was story building. But if they'd actually... If they'd actually had a bit where it ended, where sort of like he broke into like some warehouse and they like say Animus had actually been working on sort of like modern day version of the armor, and because you've unlocked all these memories, you know how to do it, so you just put it on, and then the, the final scene was you on the top of the roof as the security came, you just you know what's it like leap of faith off the side of the building, like into like a, a truck going past for the pillows or something stupid like that. It'd be really funny, and I think that'd be great for like a modern day. Assassin's Creed that they could then kind of combine with Watch Dogs kind of thing. Mm. I think the two of them together would be a great concept, but they just don't seem to do it. They go, no, this is Watch Dogs or this is Assassin's Creed. And Assassin's Creed then just went, well, we're going back to the start of history now and 
I'm not going to tell you why. So it just confuses me. <laughs> but Ooh. I prefer... Mm. Talking about things that are confusing. <laughs> oh, good. I'm just going to... Every time there's a segue. Tiny okay, segue into I like it. Go for it. <laughs> into hardware. So this is an M2 drive. This makes no sense right. to me at all. So the M2 NVMe, which is a tiny card that you slot in and gives you uh -huh. storage space. For some reason, they're making one that you can plug in five SATA cables into it. So it's oh. like plugging in your data cables. You know the data cables that you removed from the hard drive? Mm -hmm. So you plug in your hard drive cables into that. Which would be a complete mess on like most motherboards because you plug this in, and then you've got yeah. loads of cables just spilling out the middle of your motherboard. <laughs> Very strange. I think it give, because it could give more speed, so saying like PCI uh, connection tops out at this speed and other things. Okay. It was such a weird looking device. Yeah. Very strange. I'm going to go from weird because yeah. that is weird to what yes. Henry and I think looks bloody yeah, awesome. Yeah, it is. Look at it. Beautiful. Which is the Envision 74. And yeah. this is another Hyundai. We've been seeing a lot of uh, very nice mm. and intriguing cars. This is one thing me and you agree on, isn't it? It's just, uh, they're coming yes. out with some. A lot. Absolutely. Uh, a, few different, a few different electric car companies seem to be doing it. But you saying that these guys seem to be doing it the most is coming up with breaking the sort of old. Just trudging along a lot of car companies just churn out mm. the same sort of looking cars and models and boring and not being a very adventurous and i think with the yeah. electric cars they seem to be being a lot more a yeah. lot more crazy with it i think um i think the problem is like a lot of these legacy brands i mean honda's a legacy brand but technically but but they all kind of the same part of the same group so they've all got they all build they design one chassis one engine one interior system and then go oh I'll just scope sculpt your own thing on top so they all look the same because they've all got the same sort of setup for it. So there's not much you can do. Um, but because all the electrics have to be from the ground up, you can do something new. And Hyundai, although they're kind of in the same group as Kia and uh, Geely, which is the Chinese manufacturer of all the parts for them anyway. Um, so a lot of cars, there's cars that are very similar. So like the Onyx 5, the Kia 6, and the uh, Genesis GV60 are all basically the same car, but with different specs and outloads, basically. But they are pushing it more as like they're coming up with these new things. And they had a concept car ages ago as electric, which was like an old saloon from like the 70s. And they redid it with all sort of neon lights and things and made it look amazing. Um, but they're really pushing these two models as like, you could also race these models. And I think it won't be long before there's like fully just electric. I mean, it's already electric Formula One, but I can imagine electric sort of like rally race it has uh like toka touring car but electric i think it'd be quite cool yeah um because the they do, range uh, is going to be a problem on well they do things. hundreds and hundreds of miles anyway like they can do that on a full range so yeah i was thinking like wrc just, races for example oh uh, yeah they yeah. race quite a long distance over a variety mm. of tracks i suppose you could charge out between sessions and stuff like that. yeah you could do. you'd have superchargers it'd be dead in 20 minutes um but this so, this isn't. The, I don't know if this video features this, the same. This is the this is the other version. This is the um the Ionic Six. Um, they've come up with a racing version it's of that. That one is pure. That one is pure electric. Whereas this N seventy four is a uh, hydrogen fuel powered. So the hydrogen powers an electric fuel cell. So this is like a six hundred mile range or something like that, um, which oh. is pretty bonkers. Um, but obviously you need to find a hydrogen station somewhere in the country to fill it up if you didn't get one. I don't think there'll be for street racing. And I don't oh, street cars. I don't know if it will I don't know if it will come out as an actual vehicle. I think it might come out as a race car here and there. Um maybe there'll be like a version that's just all electric. Like they'll yeah. take all the wide take all the wide body off and it'll just look like a like one of the old Ford Capris. I love I love well, the they, angles they on that do. thing. It's cool. They should do, but I'm sure you could probably buy the kit and just, stick just it on yourself. This is one of those ones, and I think in the example images from further up, they show that how they've basically modelled it on like their old cars. You can yeah. see yeah. in here. I mean <laughs> this yeah. looks so ancient and yet they're, oh, also, yeah. they're taking it, they're taking yeah. it old and they've Yeah, that there is that's one of the old kit with, plays, yeah. They've mixed it with a new, but it also yeah. it just like feels futuristic in some ways. Yeah. I really like these front do, lights, do for is. example. Those. Do it is. It's because we grew up in the eighties and nineties where sci fi modified cars that were current. So all the cars were modified eighties and nineties cars. So for most of us, the sci fi 
of the future is 80s and mod- 80s and 90s modified vehicles <laughs> so when we see vehicles that are based on 80s and 90s vehicles we go oh, sci-fi because it just <laughs> is in our head because that's just what it is like now they're all kind of bubble cars and they're all white and clean and look like apple products but when we were younger they, they just used to stick bits of like you know pipe and vent on these didn't they and then it would suddenly like you know there's there's a ford probe in back to the future isn't there that lands in <laughs> so like you know it's all they're all just modified 80s vehicles so i think that's what makes it cool to us um because like in the old days of sci-fi they just picked out what they had so and there was no sponsorships either it wasn't like um i robot was all sponsored by audi you know it was just all, <laughs> it was all they just picked cars that looked cool and they made them look sci-fi so i love what they're doing um and pretty much the whole internet is going, yes, keep doing this. And I hope everyone else looks at this and goes, oh, bugger, we should do that. Like, you think of how many great older cars there are. Like, if Ford brought out an electric Capri or an electric Mark I Escort looking thing. <laughs> like, wouldn't that be beautiful if it looked like a Mark I Escort but had, like, digital headlights and, oh, I'd, I'd buy it in a second. It'd be great. Um, and there's all sorts of cars that can be redone. Toyota, imagine if they started knocking out the old 90s Celicas that are sort of, like, really popular amongst like tuners and things they started bringing them out or bring out old old looking skylines that are actually electric amazing yeah. there's so many things that there's so many things they could do and i think the people that are willing to buy these cars are sort of people our age now so they need to make cars for people our age not for not just boring repetitive clamshells mm. that sit on top of a vehicle and sort of a vaguely smooth lumps that just drive around everywhere now because, you know, as long as there's a bit of aero on it and it works better, electric cars are more efficient anyway, so. Yeah, that's just exciting. But, but yeah, this is awesome. This is cool. Um, I hope they do more of it. Um, as hope... long as you don't have to pay a subscription for the heated seats. No, we, of course you don't. It's not, we're not <laughs> mad Germans. Like, it's fine. It's proper decent vehicle. So it'll be fine. But, um, <laughs> there is a, um, I think I said last time we talked about them, there's, they're working on, there's a seven coming out soon which is a which is like an suv um so i have to see what that looks like from them but i imagine it'll look pretty cool as well yeah lots of exciting things happening in the world yeah. of electric cars so many <laughs> exciting things well, I'm from sure we'll be talking about people, people willing to make the waves are doing it really well and it's either if it's resto modding or this kind of stuff i think it's my favorite kind of thing so hopefully more people would do it. Absolutely. And that's all we've got for this week. <gasps> it's been fantastic as always. Hope you've enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Hit that subscribe button and check out Henry's channel in the description. <laughs> Is that your dog? Not your what? stomach. <laughs> She's sad it's ended. <laughs> She's so upset it's ended. <laughs> so sad. It's ended. What have we, we seen? What have we seen? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. No worries. Cheerio. Bye.